about five weeks ago, I was sitting or kneeling down here uh, in this same spot, in the same area where my brake path is. And I was showing you in that video how I was planting uh, all of the plants here in these huge, huge containers that are right here. There they are. Um, I also show you how I make a DIY bench with some papers and some 4x4s and I know that I mentioned in that video that pretty soon you were not even going to be able to see the bench and there it is, you can't see the bench. It's amazing to me how quickly plants just take off. I mean, we have been getting a lot of rain since then and we definitely have been getting lots of heat lots of 95 plus uh, days of temperatures and and some of the plants are doing really really great here others like the nasturtiums are kind of struggling but still my goal is I'll show you everything here but if you want to check that video of when I put everything together in this spot I will link it below in the description and I will also put some sort of link up here in the corner <sighs> you guys the Japanese beetles have arrived so my morning walks now will also include holding a little container with soapy water and trying to splash everything around so let me show you the path let me show you how some of the things that I have are just want to take over this this whole area um, and uh, I'm loving I'm loving this place right now Like I mentioned, the bench that I made using papers and 4x4s is completely, completely covered with plants and I am loving that. When I put all of the plants that I have in these containers here, I knew that they were going to get tall and big and bushy and I knew that that bench was just completely going to be covered and I am so, so happy with the turnout of this little corner in my garden. This corner is on the west side of my house, so it gets quite harsh sun directly after the afternoon time and the plants are just loving, loving all of the heat. I don't have any irrigation to this bed, so all of the water that they have been getting has been by me. Hand watering, which I love if you didn't know that, and everything is doing really, really well so far. The chocolate mint coleus that I am showing you here is doing extremely well for the full sun area that it's in. I was worried a little bit that it was going to completely burn with all of the sun, but so far it's doing incredible. This is one of the three varieties of coleus that I started indoors from seed and this variety chocolate mint is going to be one that I repeat next year for sure. I also started these gorgeous, gorgeous yellow cannas indoors from seed. I was surprised that a lot of people didn't know that you can start cannas from seed super, super easily. That's what I have been doing for the last couple of years and it has worked great. I know that some people save the tubers or the roots, whatever it is that you call them, and I know that that works for them, but honestly, starting them from seed is probably the easiest way for me to do it anyways. I have a couple of dahlias that are unknown, meaning I don't know what color they were supposed to be. And one of them is already blooming quite well. And I can see a few Japanese beetles there, but that's something that I'm going to start taking care of in the mornings. Like I mentioned, I'm going to come here with soapy water and I am just going to get these guys off of the blooms. Look at that gorgeous dahlia. Isn't that amazing? The other dahlia, it hasn't bloomed just quite yet, but it's very, very close. It might be a purple color as well, I'm not quite sure, 
but I'll make sure to give you updates on the color of this dahlia for sure. Like I mentioned, everything here seems to be doing really, really well despite the high temperatures and the nasturtium that I have with the dahlia in that one container is doing really, really well for being out in the full heat in the full sun and it's actually blooming really nicely compared to other nasturtiums that I have on the same side of the house and in containers as well. On this side of the bed I have a few perennials and shrubs that are in the ground and they come back every year and they are sort of the frame around the containers and around the bench and I am loving how everything is just working together and I am so so excited for this little corner because this is the first year that I actually put a lot of containers in an actual bench there for holding those containers so for future years I can play with the plants or annuals or even more perennials to have in those containers one of the shrubs that I have also in one of those huge containers are my roses, Atlas roses, and they are blooming a second time and I am just loving, loving that soft peach color and you guys, the fragrance of those roses. If you don't have any Atlas roses in your own garden, you should try to get one of those plants and you will not be disappointed. Another coleus variety that I have here in a small container is this Mighty Mosaic Coleus. And you guys, this is one of my favorite coleus that I grew from seed this year. The little specks of dark purple and a hue of pink are absolutely gorgeous. Between the dahlia and the coleus, I have a container with a super tunia, and it is completely taken over by those two plants. In that corner between my huge planters and the smaller containers that I have on this side of the house, I have a limelight hydrangea growing in the corner. That hydrangea is about six feet tall now, and it is heavily, heavily pruned to make sure that it doesn't take over that little corner and to make sure that all of the plants in the containers can breathe around it. The king tot grasses that I have in each container over here on each side of the pathway are doing quite excellent, you guys. I was expecting these plants to get huge and they are doing just that. I had a different idea for the look of these containers when they were fully blooming and it is fine, they still look amazing, but those ornamental sweet potato vines are completely, completely taking over those planters. In retrospect, I wish I would have put those in the back of the containers and the euphorbia that I have on the back that you can't really quite see should have been in the front. And the super tunias that I have in those containers as well are being definitely covered by the potato vine. I have come here and pruned really, really hard on those already twice this season and still they managed to come back stronger and healthier and just like I mentioned, completely, completely taken over those planters. Now that I know how wild and strong and huge they can be, I can plan for them to be in their own little container with nothing else around them because they are definitely plants that love, love the space. Here is the other side of those planters and I feel like the super tunias have definitely more room over there on the other side, which I love as well, but I wanted this look to be on the other side. And my poor honey super tunias, they are completely, completely almost gone. One of the things that I noticed with the king tat grasses is that some of the grass or blooms or whatever you call these guys, which by the way, look at the size of that. They tend to flop over just a little bit and I never had these grasses before so I wonder if that is something that just happens with the older stems. I think about elephant ears and the leaves that are older they tend to do about the same thing so what I have been doing is 
I have been coming here and cut those floppy stems because some of them were even on the way on the pathway and they were just kind of a little bit of a struggle going around them. On the other side of the path, I have perennials and shrubs growing nicely together. And those roses are about down now. And one of the things that I'm going to have to do right away this week in this side of the garden is I'm going to trim those roses really, really hard because I do have millennium garlic right underneath those. And because of the rain, how much rain we had uh, at the beginning of the spring, and the blooms of these roses being really, really thick and heavy, they just flapped to the side and there was nothing really that I could do. I actually quite love the look of the roses just kind of flopping to the side and just taking a little bit of the space of the pathway, but definitely the perennials underneath them are suffering a little bit. So I am definitely going to concentrate on cleaning those a little bit. My hardy hibiscus that I have coming back this year are so, so tall already. They will be blooming here in the next couple of weeks and I cannot wait to show you. Thank you for being here, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed the video. I hope that you liked the update. And like I said, I will link the video where I originally planted all of this area earlier in the spring. If you haven't watched that video, a lot of the things that I have here will make sense a little bit more. Thank you and until the next time.